Hi, it's Karen here, and I would like to introduce you to the Mystic Mountain color set and basically how to load it into Painter and then how you would mix some of the colors that Bob used in his Mystic Mountain, Mountain painting. So let's begin by opening a few items on your desktop so they're there and available for you to get to quickly. First of all, we'll go to the Window menu. We're going down to Color Panels and you can see that we have the color, the mixer, and the color sets all available to us. So if you simply select color, then these all should open up together. However, if you have unnested them, then you'll want to use the individual choices here or use the shortcut keys, Command or Control 1, Command or Control 2, and for color sets, Command or Control 3. This is our mixer pad. It can be enlarged by dragging out on the sides, or you can make it vertically larger by dragging it down. This is our color set library, and this is our color wheel. Now we're going to begin by loading up those that color set, and to do that, we're simply going to go to the options flyout and choose Import Color Set. And I'm going to go to my Mystic Mountain Color Set, which I have on my desktop, and load it directly into Painter. And you can see that we have quite a few colors here available for us to use. Now, there's several ways that you can actually show the colors on your color set library. So let's take a look at that. Let's open again the options flyout and go down to color set library view. You can show them either in a list, in a large icon, a median icon, or a small icon. At this point you can also rename your colors if you wish to as well. But for this tutorial, I'm going to keep uh, the names available so you'll have something that you can refer to. The Bob Ross color palette was basically pretty simple and consisted of alizarin crimson, bright red, cad yellow, dark sienna, Indian yellow, midnight black, the mountain mixture, which we'll talk about, phthalo blue, phthalo green, Prussian blue, sap green, titanium white, van dyke brown, and yellow ochre. And all those colors are available to you on this color palette. When we talk about color, there are a few terms to remember. One of the terms is hue, and this is the name of the color within the spectrum color. For example, Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, or cerulean blue are all blues that are close in hue. When describing colors or similar colors, the word hue is often used. The next would be value, and this is very important in our painting. When you describe a color as pale, light, or very dark, you're referring to its value. One of the ways to interpret this is to imagine a color wheel in black and white. You're seeing only the values. Intensity, or the saturation of the color, refers to the brilliance or the relative strength of the color. Adding a color, uh, such as a complementary color, will reduce its intensity. And there's tints. A color is referred to as a tint when white is added. It's always lighter in value to its hue. By adding white or red, a, a tint of pink is created. So these are the basics um, that we talk about when we're referring to color, and they should all be represented in your painting, from the very lightest hues and values to the very darkest and most saturated of those colors. We're going to begin with the mountain mixture and talk a little bit how this color was actually used to create color in many of the mountain scenes that Bob painted. And on my color palette, I'm going to actually sample uh, the mountain mixture color and put it in. And you can see that it's relatively gray-blue. And if I sample that color and then go over to the color palette, 
you can see that it's somewhere down in the cooler area of the hue, saturation, and value triangle. So it's way down at the bottom, has a little bit of blue, a little bit of gray. And as I, if I take the tick and move it up, you can see that that, com that color becomes lighter and lighter in value. So this would be the darkest value of that color. And as we go up, we're going to get a much lighter value of that color. Now there are several ways that I can, on my mixer pad, that I can actually create a darker value of this color or a lighter value of this color by adding white and then picking up the mix tool you can see that I can get a little bit lighter value of that color coming in and if I added black to that color of course that color is going to become much more concentrated and much darker in value and if I go ahead and mix that you can see now by sampling it that it's way down at the bottom of the value scale. So the colors that are used to create the mountain mix are alizarin, alizarin crimson and we're going to go ahead and select that and paint some in. We'll have a little bit of thalo blue We'll have a little bit of Prussian blue, and we'll have a little bit of Van Dyke brown. And Van Dyke brown is where we get that intensity of that color. So now when we go ahead and pick up our mix tool and mix these colors together, this is going to come out just about right. Let me sample it, and you can see that it is down in that blue and that value scale. And again, if I add white, I can add varying uh, intensity to that color, different values of that color, and um, use it for, uh, for my mountains, for rocks, for tree trunks, for the banks of the, uh, of the lake. Uh, many, many uses for this particular color. Type, uh, when we come, let's go ahead and clear this, and we can clear our mixer pad by selecting the little reset canvas. There are other things that you can do here with your mixer pad as well, and let's open the fly out one more time. You can change your mixer background, and uh, this is really a lot of fun because you can actually add images, photos, anything that you'd like that you might want to sample color from from the mixer background. Now an option that you could choose here would be to actually pick a uh, an image that has the color palette of Bob Ross on it. So this would be something that you could do and you could actually pick colors directly from that. You can see here that I loaded a color palette that actually has colors uh, that Bob Ross used quite often in his paintings. And having them on the mixer pad, I can actually sample those colors and then do a little mixing right over here on the side if I want. So this is a, a nice little um, option. We can go ahead and move this image over. So if we want a little more room for mixing, we can do that as well. Let's talk about the snow and what colors we would use for the shadowed snow. Bob used titanium white, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And we'll go ahead and paint a little bit of that right in here. You see it's a nice warm white. And phthalo blue. So we'll go ahead and uh, also sample a little bit of phthalo blue here and we'll go ahead and paint that in. And then we would mix those two colors and that would give us our really lovely shadowed snow areas that you see a lot on the mountain tops and on the shaded part of the mountain. For trees we will tend to use the mountain mixture 
and we'll go ahead and paint some of that in. And a mixture of white and green. So we'll go ahead and select a little bit of white and a little bit of our, let's go with our sap green. And then again with our mixer tool, we can go ahead and mix those colors. And I kind of like to mix the darkest value towards the center here. And then as I'm going outward, you'll notice that color gets a little more pure, a little more light in value. And so I have a nice broad range of color that I can choose from and sample from on the uh, mixer pad. Evergreens were mostly made up of the mountain mixture. And we'll go ahead and paint some of that on here. And we use this a lot for our reflections in the water. Uh, you, it's important to note that when you are painting reflections, it's a good idea to look at the value of the trees. If they tend to be darker on land, then in the water that reflection is actually going to be a little warmer and a little lighter. So this gives you a more realistic look to the to the shadows that are cast into the water. Tree trunks we're going to use Van Dyke Brown and white. So we'll go ahead and select a little bit of Van Dyke Brown, select a little bit of our titanium white, and mix, 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 mix. And this makes a very nice tree trunk for distant trees, even your uh, foreground trees, uh, little bits of uh, branches and twigs coming out from the from the ground plane. Highlights for our trees will be yellow and green, crimson and red. So I, I really like using the sap green for this. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in, a little bit of cad yellow, a little bit of crimson, alizarin crimson, and a little bit of bright red. And so let's mix those together and see what we get. So we get some nice bright green value here. This is a, a, a nice green to use on trees. There's an old saying that if your green is as close to a martini olive as possible, you've got a good green going. So when I sample this green, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You can see that there's a nice wide range of greens from the mid value or the, the uh, saturated value that we have here. And as we move up, we can use lighter and lighter values for, for our highlights. So this created a really nice green for us to begin with. And as we sample different colors around, we can pick up different variations of that color in terms of value and hue. So you'll have a nice mixture there. For the tree trunks and banks that you see here, uh, Van Dyke Brown for the banks uh, is used pretty exclusively. And Van Dyke Brown, we're going to paint a little bit of that in. Now if I wanted to darken this color, I could certainly add a bit of mountain mixture to that. I could add a little bit of Mars Black, Midnight Black to that and get a nice darker mixture. And then of course if I add a little bit of titanium white, I can actually um, lighten up that color as well. So if I wanted a lighter value of that here, and we'll use a little mountain mixture on this end. And you can see the difference we get there. Nice dark, dark brown. 
So perfect for the, the for the banks, perfect for creating little crevices and rocks. The mid value for the the basic uh, edges of the banks, and then lighter values for highlights. For paint breaks along the tops of mountains, another good mixture to use would be the mountain mix, um, along with um, white and brown mixed together. So you can probably get something in this range here that would work good for your little mountain breaks. I oftentimes will use just simply the mountain mix, which works very nicely. Um, and then I can use it in different values by adding white or black to it. Okay, so this is one of the uh, fun things that you can do with color and working with a mixer pad and learning to mix some of those colors directly on your mixer pad to use in your, in your paintings, in your landscape paintings, to bring everything together in harmony. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.